This is a special edition of Late Night Health. I'm Mark Allen. Our guest is Seneca Scott. Seneca is the executive director of Neighbors Together in Oakland, California. Uh, the other day, on a lark, my wife and I decided to drive to downtown Los Angeles. And we were going to dinner. There's a special place down there that we've been going to for years and years. It was great. And what's, what's your name? I'm from LA. Well, I live oh, in LA oh. for a while. Felipe's. You must know Felipe's. Oh, yeah, I know Felipe's. Right? Yes. Yeah. So we were going down there and we drove around and we were amazed because we live in Ventura County and we do have a homeless situation here. But the homeless situation around the federal buildings, around the courts, uh, within walking distance of Felipe's is amazing. And my wife said, but we voted here in California to have a bond and it won to take care of the situation, the homeless situation. And nobody seems to be doing anything. I mean, corralling them up and putting them into shelters doesn't seem to be working and I know that, God forbid, that Seneca, you or I were homeless and had to go to a shelter and scared the living daylights out of us. At least it would for me, based on what I've heard. Is there a solution to homeless before we talk about neighbors together? Yes, there is a solution to homelessness. But first, we have to be honest with ourselves about how we got here. And... We need to be honest with ourselves that we are potentially in the early stages of an American collapse. We, we flirted with this back in the late 60s and early 70s. So you, you look like you may have been around back then. Uh, oh, I wasn't. I was. <laughs> okay, I wasn't. I was born in 79. But, um, you know, I read a little bit of books and stuff. So I have a historic perspective. Now, while history is not a mirror, it definitely gives you some some insight onto what's potential for us. And it looks to me now like we're, we're in one of those secular cycles where we're having a great depression 2.0. We've already seen the great unwash appear before us, if you're familiar with the term. Sure. Um, that's what we're experiencing right now. I don't think we're being honest with ourselves about what we're facing. And that lack of uh, privacy is... It, it, it intersects with our current political zeitgeist. And we were, we were uh, I don't know, we went from, from regular politics to identity politics, and now we're in secretarian politics, where it's religious. Your, your political state is your religion now. And so mm -hmm. I have a statement that when, when people cannot compete financially, they compete for more superiority. And that's a very dangerous place to be. So can we solve it? Yes, we can solve it. But it's going to take us admitting to some of the fundamental issues that we have in this country. And unfortunately, uh, root causes is a big buzzword right now. You're going to hear, if you haven't got sick of hearing it, you're going to get sick of hearing it. Uh, what's your rule for profanity on your show? I don't want to be a potty mouth if, if that's not acceptable here. Is that okay? It's, uh, uh, sure, why not? Okay. All right. I, I'll hold back. But it's, it's, um, it's really, we're a family, really alarming. We're a family, we're a family show. show. We're okay. a family like, show. No, it's no problem. I don't have to drop any curse words. That's it's, okay. It's funny. I have a potty mouth, but when there's a microphone around, I unpotty. Okay. Uh, I can. It's deliberate. So yeah. I, I think, I think we need to, we need to admit that we've gone off the rails. We need to admit that people cannot compete financially in America anymore, and that our, our upward mobility is becoming, you know, a sham. You uh, you moved from L.A. to the Bay Area uh, to uh, to run a union, right? Uh, somewhat. I was the East Bay director for SCIU Ten Two One, so I ran the East Bay part. Um, there's the San Francisco, and then there's the East Bay. And the and what is the union for? Who does it represent? The union represented public sector workers, mostly public sector workers. Uh, if you work for the city of Oakland or any of the East Bay cities or San Francisco, and you have uh, 
a, a range of jobs and they're probably in our union. Most public works, a lot of, um, a lot of city workers. We have over 10,000, I don't work anymore. They have over 10,000 members <laughs> in San Francisco. You know, we have maybe 5,000 members in Oakland, 55,000 members in the Bay Area. If you remember the Bay Area transit strike, when the fight shut down, I was sure. directed during that time. Got it. Uh, and you you saw a need, I guess. You, you uh, I believe you were um, at, a, at a at a garden and yes. decided, you know, were you growing your own tomatoes in the garden? Oh, yeah, we grow a lot of stuff in our garden. Um, tomatoes, medicinal plants. We have pretty much, uh, you name it, if it grows in this climate, we've grown it. We've grown cornfields and all of that. We have goats and chickens and ducks. We've raised pigs. We've had breakfast sandwiches. I got one single source. Oh, we are, if you go to Bottoms Up Community Garden on your Google, we're six pages deep with content. Just go explore all of the amazing things that we've done. We're not a nonprofit. We're not funded. We're simply neighbors together um, who want to grow food and, and improve the vitality of our neighborhood. All and right. The it's biggest been, question. It's been amazing. The biggest question is how do you fight the damn squirrels? We'll, we'll talk about that afterwards. <laughs> <They're right for. laughs> you know. They, yeah, uh, squirrels, last... squirrels go to sunflowers. You plant sunflowers for them on the edge of the property, and then they'll yeah. stay away. I'm gonna go get some. Um, the last two years, they've they've decimated my uh, my small tomato batch. Um, they eat your tomatoes? Yeah. Wow, I've never them. seen that. Yeah, they love them. You've they got the healthy it. squirrels out in Ventura, huh? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We, the. L.A. and Ventura are um, inundated with squirrels. Uh, and I remember back before you were born in the 70s, in the San Fernando Valley, the squirrel uh, population was so bad, they were actually climbing on the power lines and they'd chew through the cable, they'd get electrocuted, and of course cause sh- shortages and drop dead. That's why but- I call them tree rats. Yeah, that's exactly what they are. They're tree rats. Yeah, they're tree rats. People get all mad when your dog kills them when you shoot one with an air rifle. And you're like, it's a rodent, you know? Exactly. They're yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you, know. Icky. you grew up here in LA. You know what I'm talking. about. I'm from know. Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, I, moved, okay. I moved to LA after college. I went to Cornell. I got out in '02 and moved to Los Angeles in 2002. And uh, smart men went to Cornell. Let, let's talk about neighbors together. What my wife said seems to be true in the Oakland area. There may be funding. There may be something that can be done. Nobody is doing anything about it. Uh, there is a certain percentage of people who live on the street who want to be on the street. We can't do anything about that. They're not mentally disabled. They're not financially um, uh, ready to, um, to, to participate in society, but they don't want to. They don't want to work. And there is a certain percentage of that. But a lot of people are homeless because of the economy, because of some kind of catastrophe in their family, uh, mental illness and disease. AIDS is a big problem. What can we do, not only at Neighbors Together in Oakland, what can we do globally to alleviate the homeless? I, I, I don't want to speak outside of America. Um, All right. Because I'm not, I'm not intimately familiar with the politics to, to weigh in strategically. But in America, we have an urgent need for election reform. Uh, Bernie Sanders ran on election reform needs, and we seem to have forgotten that conversation since in the past decade or so. We need to get the corporate dollars out of our election because it means that in order to get elected for a position, you have to get the money. And if you have to get the money, then you have to do what the people who give you the money say, or you're not gonna stay in those positions for long. So the way that we have our politics set up, it, it, creates, a, it creates a space where it, it, integrity is a problem, it's a challenge. It's a challenge for any elected official to, to hold the integrity. 
that's why with Neighbors Together, uh, one of our saying is we don't go left, right. We go up, down. Even you have integrity, we <laughs> don't. Right? And I got that from Dr. Chris Martinson from uh, Peak Prosperity videos, which has been amazing uh, videos throughout the pandemic on all sorts of topics. Right? It's an incredible, a brilliant mind. And I love that saying because it speaks to our, our current political sphere. Everything's politicized now, right? So we need to go back to neighbors, helping neighbors. We need to go back to being resilient and being prepared for the next stage of this American collapse. Our rent moratoriums are ending in a matter of weeks if we don't extend them again. We have many more problems coming down the pipeline that if we're divided in this country, we're going to burn the country down. I say that in Oakland. If we're divided in Oakland, we're going to burn Oakland down. It's burning now. We have daily fire. It's a huge issue with Austin right now in our city. So what we're looking at is we're at a crossroads, and we need to decide what kind of country we want to be. So when you say that there's money there, there's money there, but we're not. there's no public will. Public will is more important than the money. I'll give you a good example. Sure. Let's say let's say you had a policy where you wanted to pay. This is a real story. On Nextdoor, are you familiar with Nextdoor, right? No. It's an app. It's an app uh, where people can talk in their neighborhood. Okay. And yes. Yes. It's, sure. It's, it could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on who's on it. But on Nextdoor, which I'm on it a lot, it's great for neighbors. Is here's a policy that will pay homeless people to clean up after their own camps. And you saw two arguments being formed. The first is the data looks promising, let's do it. The other one was, oh great, now you're gonna pay these people to clean up the mess they made. Very snarky, very apathetic, very dismissive. And there's validity to that on the surface, right? Like, okay, people are making a mess, you're gonna pay, pay them to clean up the mess they made. Why don't you just not let them make the mess? That would seem to be the logical thing. But life don't work like that. Right? We don't have we can't not let them make the mess. You don't have enough covers for that. So what do you do instead? If you pay people to clean up their own messes, a few things happen. One, they're doing a job, they're doing something every day, they're getting back into the sink of a semblance of employment. It keeps the place clean, it keeps public works from having to go over there with heavy equipment. And the numbers show that it it creates a much more livable environment for the unhoused and the housed in our community while we figure this out. So the numbers suggest that it works, but there's no public will for it. What do you mean by public will? In other words, public, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, public, go ahead. Public, public will is, is, you know what? It's a great book in, in The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell, where he talks about an alcoholic in Vegas and how this alcoholic in one calendar year costs nearly, and I'm getting, I'm just spitballing the numbers, roughly a million bucks to keep this guy alive. They brought him to ER three times to bring him back to life. Then they made a program where they spent $200,000 on Bob to get him an apartment, to get him all the health he needed to get off AA, all the sources that, the supports that Bob needed. One year later, Bob paying for his apartment, he had to gain full employment. Wow, it worked. But it took $200,000. Bob took out two, $1.2 million of our taxpayers' money in Nevada, went to one Bob when he went to the hospital because he was he's dead having... you got to bring him back to life it's, it's the law you can't let yeah. that guy die right so what, what's better two hundred thousand dollars and getting him back to society or spending a million every year until he died what is going on right now in oakland and is this just a microcosm of what's happening in inner cities throughout the country Absolutely. Every inner city is going through the same thing. People cannot compete financially. It just our boils safety, down to dollars. Our safety net holes are too big. And another thing that you have is that you have a very strong social justice community that protects homeless advocacy rights. And the goalposts is moved. Right? It moved from being in a place that was, you're actually really protecting these people to now you're enabling this behavior. And that's another part that we're not talking about. In Oakland, in particular, we have an encampment management policy. 
that took a year to make. It was passed unanimously in October during the height of an election when people's jobs were on the line. So they voted for mm-hmm. it. And then it's supposed to start January 1st, and it never began. And the reason that they give is anytime they want to do it, they're flooded with homeless advocates saying it's inhumane, you're evicting people. They're blatantly lying about it, right? Um, but there's no counter voice because our culture today has created a place where people are very worried about speaking out unless it's very curated to your current echo chamber. Is this a, a black and white issue, a people Absolutely. issue rather than a color issue? It's a race issue in the sense that 70% of people unhoused in Oakland are black. I think official number is 74. Um, But if you look at the last three years, the average person who's coming to Oakland is white. So you have, so back in 08, you had a lot of black people lose their home because of our lack of community wealth. And they ended up on the streets in the communities that they lived in. And if you go to maybe 2014, the average the average person we saw who was homeless was homeless in the neighborhood they grew up in or lived in previously. And they were black. And now they're on drugs and they have mental health issues. 70% of people who are homeless have mental health and drug issues. And they're homeless. It's a triumvirate. And these drugs obviously plague the black community more. Another issue is that because of these drug addiction, homeless can't center around open air drug markets. Because of the lack of enforcement and our encampment management, encampments have become the open air drug market. They're no longer centered in open air drug markets. They have become the drug markets because the Fourth Amendment and the right to camp and public camping allows drug dealers to set up a tent and now you can't search it. It's easier to get a search warrant for a house than it is for a tent because the city protects the homeless. We're coddling people at this point. We have a failure to triage. When you're faced with a disaster, you don't go into an earthquake, hear people screaming for help, and then sit around in a circle and say, let's figure out how we can help everyone before we make any moves. Because that's what we're doing right now. We're not out there getting involved and helping people who could be helped. And not that you don't want to not help people who could be saved. I'm not saying you euthanize people like you do in (laughs) triage. It's not an exact parallel, but the methodology is the same. You need to take immediate action now. And you can't wait another day. And and I don't disagree with you. I think that uh, this is this is the health of the community. I mean, we're late night health, and we're taking a, a a look at a social disgrace throughout the country. Um, and whether it's somebody who's black or green or pink, yellow, white, it is a uh, it is an endemic, if you will, um, of, of problems. And it seems to me to ba- be based with drugs, alcohol. And so it's... Fentanyl I mean, is a huge part. Of, it's not the reason, but it's a force multiplier. I mean, fentanyl and meth are back in spades. And it's, it's a very, very dangerous shot. Th- What's happening right now? You're you're um, you're asking the the city of Oakland to step up. That the law was made. Let's do something about it. Is that yes. the bottom line? Yeah, you made a policy, fund it, and implement it. The policies, encampment management policies. Juxtapose that to Austin, who just made public camping illegal. It's a very progressive, kind, compassionate policy, and the fact that they're not implementing it because of infighting in the city between moderates and progressive, and the fact that you're letting a few thousand homeless advocates hold a city of over 400,000 people hostage. Wow. And I'm saying this unabashedly, right? Look, Neighbors Together is largely run by black men. Right? I'm an executive director, I'm a black man. We're in a black neighborhood. We're addressing mostly black issues, seeing that 74% of people who are homeless in Oakland are black. And when we put out our town sweep campaign, and we chose that name very deliberately, it's, a, it's you play chess? Yes. That's a, that's called a sacrifice pawn. <laughs> because we knew that people would come over the top and not read anything about a sea town sweep and align that with street sweep. 
but it's the ink block test. It could mean sweeping up the street. It could mean sweeping up corrupt politicians. You see what you want to see in it. But we chose it because it was like throwing a big old stone in that lake. We need to trouble the water because people are at a standstill. And what happened was um, the, the blowback from the activist community was severe. But here's one thing of note. I did not see one person of color publicly say anything about me or Neighbors Together. I saw lots of white people say the most mean, nastiest things about me, threatening to burn down my house, threatening my life, all of this. And what it showed me is that I went, I went, I know homeless, I'm a, I'm a community advocate. All right? I'm an activist. I know people in these communities. I went right to them and said, what's going on here? Why, what's going on? And I said, this is an alarming pattern and I'm not afraid to say it. Every single person who came out and said something in public negative about Neighbors Together in Town Sweep, without doing any research, was white. But is it, it, it seems to me that it's not a black issue. It's not a white issue. It's a people issue. It's a, it's a class issue. Ah. The, the issue is, on the, in, the, in the class warfare, who's, who's seeing the most damage from that warfare? It's black and brown people. So when you have a class issue, people who are at the bottom of that class are going to be affected first. And since those people are predominantly black and brown, that's what it looks like. If you look at the household net worth for black people, it's under a hundred bucks. And for white people, it's over $300,000. So while it is a class issue, the class, the, the class divide is racially, um, for the lack of a better word, it's, it's, it's influenced by race because of the history of America. Uh, I believe um, President Biden has made a step toward helping in that last week. What did he do? I, I'm, I, I, reparations, I believe, are on the table. Uh, so for, reparations are, here's my idea for reparations. Sure. If it's, if it's, I've had debates with Republicans about this, and they went in saying, I hate reparations, it's stupid. And they left saying, I'll do reparations your way. And here's the difference. Reparations is seen as taxation. So if I'm a person of wealth and I'm white and I and I see reparations as a form of taxation because I'm left, I'm right or center, or I'm a, or I'm center, and I don't trust the individuals who are gonna tax me and supposedly use that money to better the black community, I'm against it. So my reparations plan is something I, that I think most people will vote for. For the next 20 years, if you are Black or Native American, and let's not get into the percentage of whatever, if you're Black or Native American, we can work that out later with a test. <laughs> For the next 20 years, you don't pay state, federal, or capital gains taxes. You also don't pay for public education, higher education. 20 years. That's reparation. Why? It's no taxation. And it's a great idea. Get you only get reparations if you want it. That's it. That way, nobody wastes any money. All of the, all of the, 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 the adversaries go away. And I sold that idea to hardcore Republicans. They're like, I'll do that. I'll vote for that. Wow. That's, because if uh... you look at, if you look at the numbers, that's less than twenty percent of America. The Black and Native American population is less than one fifth of this country. We can afford that bill. Yeah, and that would be for 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 uh, for public uh, schools, not necessarily private. No, not private schools, but public yeah. schools. Public high, public, public lower education is already free, K through twelve. Got it. But community colleges and higher education, the state colleges are not. Right. I mean, you uh, here in the Southern California area or California, you know, uh, uh, San Francisco uh, State, uh, Cal State Northridge, where I went. Free. Oh, you went to Northwood. I used to be a union rep there, great school. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I used to be the union rep for that. I used to live uh, right over in, in, um, in Northwood area, in the Valley. Yeah, I uh, I was there for a number of years uh, running the uh, the uh, NPR station, one of the oh, nice. on the on the station. It's, no, it's now rock and roll. Um, I'm really... Uh, let's take a look at the lower bottoms and the bottoms up cafe as we wrap up our time together. Tell us about that. 
Oh, the cafe, we we stopped maybe six years ago. Um, we we were a phenomenon. We had people coming from Chespanese in Berkeley, from French Laundry up in up in Napa. Uh, we were wow. mostly single source breakfast sandwiches. Like we raised our own hogs, we cooked them, made bacon. We made strawberry black pepper jam from strawberries Ooh. that we that we grew and peppercorns that we grew. Um, it was amazing and. We wanted to start a restaurant and we wanted to keep it in our neighborhood, but because of the lack of development, there were no kitchens there. Every building that we saw, the owner wanted us to do the the improvements. Uh, right? So the business model didn't work You should work look out at it no now, but maybe because of COVID, a lot of restaurants have gone under, unfortunately. They have, unfortunately, and I'm happy we didn't do it because this would have been a year we were projected to probably be in a block. Would have been 2020. Right. It would have been uh, really, really disastrous. But the, but the the garden itself is a phenomenon in the fourth. It led to Ocala Festival. So our street festival was both and started in our community garden. If you go to Maker Magazine, Make Scene, and they did a beautiful um, write-up on Ocala and Bottoms Up Community Garden that I think is the best uh, place to find our full story of, of how that came out. Well, we're going to have, you'll uh, let me know, and we'll have that up here on our, our show uh, video uh, yeah, throughout I'll our, entire, our entire time. Um, Seneca, where is Neighbors Together going? What's the future? The next six Neighbors, months? Next six months, we want to gain a robust membership across the city. Right now, Oakland is divided between neighborhoods. We want to create an Oakland where there are no good neighborhoods or bad neighborhoods, but thriving neighborhoods throughout where everyone wants to live. There are advantages to the hills, but there are advantages to the bottoms as well, right? The hills may have the views, but over here in the bottoms, we're, we're five minutes from San Francisco. I could be in a financial district in San Francisco quicker than someone who lives in San Francisco, right? And, and the so, great restaurants there, if you can afford them. The great them. restaurants, you have access to downtown. So West Oakland is, is one of the fastest growing neighborhoods uh, and it's getting very expensive. So it is, we want to save our city. We want to bring neighbors together across races, across classes, and under, under the vision that we all need to be united to be resilient. And our four tenants are community safety, localized agricultural systems, thriving local businesses, and accessible housing. When we say accessible as a nod to the current housing crisis, affordable doesn't cut it. If, you're on, if you have to kick a drug habit and you're mentally disabled, you're not going to afford any time, anything anytime soon. You need to access house. But if right? you're mentally, mentally uh, uh, disabled, if you have some kind of mental challenge, Shouldn't you be in some kind of a, I, I don't want to say a group home. Mental but... institution. Yeah. Should you Not... be committed? No. No, no, no. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that word? Committed? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think, know. I think, I think that right now we, we, words have power, absolutely. Sure. So when you stray away from a word, because of the uncomfortableness, when it means exactly what you want to say, it right. creates confusion. I do mean committed. Committed means you take someone against their will and you put them in a mental hospital. If you look at our change.org petition, there's a wall in a mural with a Black Panther mural, and it says it's one of the Black Panther tenants. We want shelter fit for human beings. And outside, outside is a person, a Black man, sleeping under a pile of trash. Yeah, it's it, that man needs to be committed to a mental hospital. He will not go willingly. And what is what the word? What is the word for taking someone against their will and giving them help? Well, at the same time, commitment to a woman or a, a partner. I like know. that. Yeah, huh? That's a good one. I like that. I'm committed to my partner. Are you married? I, I am. I won't tell you how many years, but. <laughs> I, I'm I'm uh, I'm not officially married, but we've been together sixteen years or seventeen years or something like and that. That's, but and it doesn't matter if you're you know I don't care if you're what it is if you're committed to a relationship, but you're doing that because you want to, and being committed to a mental institution Ooh. against your will, 
that's that's a different swing of the word, really. I like that. No, that's very that's 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 good. What what is a good word? I like words. I'm a word guy, right? It's like a it's not a, it's not abracadabra, right? But it does matter, right? It does. It does matter. And I think you know, um, right now there's there's growing uh, uh, we, we've in the news anti anti Asian rhetoric. Uh, anti-Semitism is growing not only in this country but throughout the world. Skyrocketing, really alarmingly quick. It is. I would add, yeah. Yeah, it it, it is a- anti anti-black, uh, anti-African American, uh, uh, Hispanics. I mean, I don't get it. Why don't we just sit down in your garden ah, and eat? I'll tell you, we do. <laughs> so uh, we have our meters in our garden, and it's great. Um, I'll tell you why. I can only speak from my experience. It's deliberate. It's deliberate. Because our masters, and we do have masters, they're called central bankers. When you have a federal reserve, fractional reserve banking system that's not elected, that has the power to print your currency to the tune of trillions of dollars that our children and our children's children and our children's children's children are gonna have to pay for, you have a problem. We don't have a democracy. We have a fallacy of a democracy. That's one of the issues that we're having. We do have an enemy. It's called our central banker. Let's make no mistake about it. Okay? Yeah. And I'm not shy to say that. Sure. What we've seen is criminal. We have to work for our money. I can't go hit some buttons on a computer screen and sit at the black rock to buy every house on the block. It's evil. It's immoral. And it's going to lead to conflict in America very soon. And the wow. reason that you see the reason you see racial division is because they know that. If you look at the, I, I, I'm sorry. If you look at the George Floyd, is this a strict time cut thing? Because I can, I don't know how much time we got. We've got a couple more minutes. I, I, I just want to interrupt you, and I'm sorry. I'm sure, of course, sorry, it's your show. Come. It's your show, brother. It's a, it's our show. It's our conversation. Thank you. It would seem to me that the problem is green. Yes. It's, not, it's not black and white or yellow or anything. It's green. green. Maya Angelou says, whatever humans can do with human nature, that means I can do it and so can you. Yeah. It's, greed comes from lack. The same way people who are homeless hoard, and hoarding is a common mental illness among people who are homeless, is because hoarding is associated with going through in a time of intense need. These things have been studied by very smart people, right? So we have, we have, as, as humans, as far back as we can trace our recorded history now, before we lost the record, because we know that we were around a long time and we lost the records. We don't know yeah. what happened back then. But as long as we can record our record, we've, we've been scarce. We've just in the last 50 years figured out how to manipulate our earth where we don't have to have scarcity in this world. But just because we have the technology to not have scarcity doesn't undo thousands of years of human trauma. And now we've scientifically proved that children inherit the trauma from their ancestors. Spiritually, we all have known that, but now science has proven it. Well, if we had this ever-ending chain of scarcity and, and, and need, you're gonna break that cycle we got to break it. Otherwise, the pendulum just going to keep swinging. And it goes right? back and it goes, goes back, back and, and forth. forth and back and forth. And we're in a different swing now. Um, but, but the difference is we do have the things that we need in front of us. It's not the case now. Well, global warming, climate change may change that very soon. But right now... Well, there- I, I, I don't mean to be political, but I'm going to be a smart ass here. You mean there sure. is really there really is climate change? I don't know. Um, you know what? The climate's always changing. Of course it is. Whether we have man-made climate change or not is something I stop arguing with people with because of, it's just a rabbit hole. It's an easy fix. Are we treating our Earth with respect or are we not? Yeah, are we being are we being are we be, you know are we being renewable or are we not? Is our ocean healthy or is it sick? Is our air pure or is it dirty? Let's fix those things. 
right? And then you don't believe in man-made CO2 or whatever. I don't care. Do you like clean air and clean water? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about that, you know? Um, because it's, it's, it's political now. Sound and I've seen, I've, you know, I've friends on both sides of, the, of that fence, to be honest with you. I do. Yeah, it's... Um... Seneca, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up, but I invite you to come back when you want to do this again. You'll you'll let us know, and we'll find some some topics. I hope you enjoy what we're doing. Listen, everybody. I do really very yeah. much. Thank you for the time. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, this is Neighbors Together. What is the uh, the website that you want people to go to? Go to Neighbors Together Oakland dot org. Neighbors Together Oakland dot o r g. Great. We'll have that up here on on our uh, uh, on the on the screen, um, and we appreciate your time. Hold on. I'm uh, I'm Mark Allen. This has been Late Night Health, and we're talking about healing the planet one city at a time. Uh, we'll be back very soon. Bye bye for now.